welcome to your home cooking show. I'm Deborah, your host. Today we are in Patrick's kitchen. He'll be showing us how he cans or jars apricots. And we've been doing it the last few days. We have a ton to go. And here's one of the jars of apricots. They are so yummy. So he does use the hot water bath method. And we are ready to go, so stay tuned, and here we go. just the essentials to can these beautifully ripe apricots. So let's get started. All right, let's go. Okay, here's some fresh apricots. We're lucky enough to have a tree in our backyard so we didn't have to buy these. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is just remove the pit. And what I do is I just kind of pull the apricot apart and set the pit aside. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure these because you need to know the weight of your fruit so that you can add the appropriate amount of sugar. And we'll get to that recipe here in a bit. And after you've uh, pitted a few, you want to roughly chop these. And you want to leave some pieces in here. Uh, that's a typical jam has got some whole pieces, not whole pieces, but, but chunks of fruit. Otherwise it's just a jelly and that's not any, that's not as good. So. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh these. We're going to keep uh, pitting and chopping until we get roughly three pounds. Okay. All right, so I have pitted and chopped uh, roughly three pounds. They're weighed on our little scale here. I have two pounds in the pan, and this is the third pound. And I want to show you that I'm using both very ripe fruit I've um, got some really good ripe pieces, and I'm using some that are just not quite ripe. And the reason is, is we want a lot of pectin in here to set this fruit up. And partially ripened fruit is a good source of extra pectin. So we've got our three pounds now, a pound here, and two pounds in our pan. This is a pot. And now we're going to be adding some other ingredients, and I'll get those together. We're ready to add the final three ingredients to our chopped and pitted apricots. And those three ingredients are going to be three and a half cups of sugar. Remember, we have three pounds of apricots. Four tablespoons of lemon juice, and you have to have lemon juice and some or some sort of acid to mix with the fruit, because that's what develops the pectin and produces the set and it also helps to uh, preserve uh, the canned fruit. And what we're using today is ball real fruit, low or no sugar needed pectin. Apricots do have a lot of pectin. You don't necessarily need to add it, but I find that it makes sure that you're gonna have a good set on your jelly or jam so it's not runny when you open it up. The next thing we need to have prepared as we start the heat on this, is we want to sterilize our jars. We have six jars in here. Remember, we are making a half a batch. We have a funnel for the jar to load the fruit into. We have the six lids, which we are gonna add boiling water to when it's time to can. A pair of tongs to get the uh, hot jars out and a ladle. And we'll be using those when we're finished cooking. We're going to cook for approximately 25 minutes. So let's start. And what you want to do is we want to stir the fruit during the entire cooking process. And this is going to assure that we have a lot of the moisture removed from this fruit. What we're doing when we're cooking is we're bringing it up to a, a high temperature over the boiling point. 
we're getting rid of as much moisture as possible and allowing the pectin and the fruit to combine and form what it takes to jellify and make a good preserve. So we're all mixed up. As soon as it gets boiling, we'll continue to stir. And we want to stir throughout the whole process. Okay, while our fruit is starting to heat up, we want to have a pot of simmering water. And in that pot, we're going to put the six jars. These are half pint jars. Remember, my batch is three pounds of apricots. And that will fill uh, six jars, six half pint jars. We want to have a funnel so that we don't get fruit all over the top of the jar. We want to have the six lids in here. We're going to pour boiling water in there when it's time to can to sterilize those. A pair of tongs here to remove the jars and a ladle to load the fruit into the jars. Okay, our cooking is proceeding right now. We're about halfway through the 20 to 25 minutes that uh, I cook these for. What they need to be is stirred and you should stir frequently, which means every two to three minutes you want to stir. And what you're doing is you're releasing a lot of the uh, excess water in the fruit and that will help to bind it and produce a really nice preserve. Okay, we're nearing the end of the 20 to 25 minute cooking period. This whole time I've been stirring frequently, as I mentioned before. We also want to make sure that we have a nice rolling boil going so that we evaporate as much water as possible. Now here's the way we check to see whether or not it's cooked long enough and we're going to have a good set to the fruit. We've put a plate in the freezer, a small plate, and on that plate we're going to put a little dollop of the juice. Right in the center of the plate there. Okay, look at that beautiful color. All right, the plate goes back in the freezer for one and a half to two minutes. And I'll show you what happens when we take it out. Okay, our plate has been in the freezer for two minutes. When we take it out, the first thing we want to see is that it doesn't run off the plate. The next thing we're going to look for is we want it to wrinkle as we move our finger through it. And you can see it wrinkles up really nice. And that means we're going to have a jam or a jelly or whatever you're making that sets beautifully. So here we go. We're going to start the canning process. All right, we're getting our jars out of the simmering water, nicely sterilized. These jars were previously washed in the dishwasher. And I've got my ladle in there, and that's kind of helped sterilize it. I don't want to throw my funnel in and just give it a nice bath there to sterilize. And we're going to pour some hot simmering water over the lids. Okay. Okay, I don't know whether you noticed, but I don't use a thermometer. Um, after you've been cooking for a while and have made these, you'll, you'll see something that a lot of cooks understand, and that is the glossiness of the cooked fruit. It has a real shiny, glossy texture, and that's how you know that you've reached the temperature. One of these days, I might get a candy thermometer, but it hasn't affected my ability to produce a good jar of jam. So here we go. We're going to ladle the fruit and liquid into the jars. And we want to leave approximately a quarter inch of head space. And what I mean by that is the jar isn't totally full, but it's got about a quarter inch below the top of the lid. we've loaded the jars into a pot. We've added simmering water to at least cover about an inch above the jar tops. And we're going to keep that on a low boil for about 10 minutes. At the end of the 10 minutes, we'll cut the heat and we'll leave them in there for five more minutes and they're done. All right, our water bath is finished. 10 minutes at a low boil. And in about five minutes, sitting in the uh, water with the heat turned off, we're going to take these out, and you'll see that the lids have a convex look to them. And shortly after these come out, they're going to start sucking down, and you'll hear a click. 
I didn't think I just heard it. That one clicked, and you can see it's now concave. does happen rather quickly, but that just tells you that they're vacuum sealing themselves and they'll be good in the cupboard for up to a year. Make sure you mark the tops with when you can, and there you go. There you go. All right. Whoops, I had seven out there. <laughs> okay, well, so that's a wrap. Thank you for watching. And I am going to just take a little bite of this apricot jam. It is so good. Mmm. 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 Remember to make comments. I'd love to hear from you. And please subscribe. And turn on your notification bell. And you'll be able to see all the upcoming videos. So thank you again. Mm. Oh man, this jam is some of the best you've ever made. This is really good. Mm. Mm. I look forward to more.